I'm Ollie. I'm a 12 year old entomologist. An entomologist is someone who studies invertebrates. That's things like insects and bugs. I'm 12 years old and I've been fascinated by insects for at least 12 years. <laughs> I like all insects, but I'm fascinated by cicadas. From a very young age, I'll go out into the garden and try and hunt for them. Sometimes people ask me why I like cicadas and not things like football. Well, I once played football and everybody just sat on me. When insects sit on you, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> I think cicadas are so cool that a couple of years ago, I wrote a book called Cicadas of New Zealand. This is a field guide to the 42 different types of cicada. It took me over a year... <laughs> It took me over a year to write as I travelled all over New Zealand trying to find the different cicadas to photograph. Being a 12-year-old is great, being an entomologist is great, but being a 12-year-old entomologist has its challenges. Here's why. <laughs> Challenge one, I can't drive. This is one of my biggest challenges. Because I can't drive, I need my parents to drive me places. This means the whole family, including my two younger, two younger sisters, have to come along for the ride. I really don't like long car trips. I don't even get the front seat. <laughs> Unfortunately, my sisters really don't like these car trips either, and they spend most of the time looking like this. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> but if you're into insects and cicadas, then you do need to do a lot of travelling. Cicadas are really spread out from the northern snoring cicada in the north to the, north to the southern spear grass cicada in the south. The other 40 species are spread out in between these two, with some on offshore islands as well. Challenge two, cicadas are hard to find. When you get to where the cicadas are supposed to be, it's not always easy to find them. I had to go to the Ongaronga River near Wellington two years in a row, which is a whole day's driveway, in order to catch the Maya cicada. My sisters weren't too impressed. There they are again. <laughs> it took most of the day, but with the help of some other cicada scientists, Chris Simon and David Lane, I was able to make sure I was looking in the right places and caught one. Another cicada I also spent a lot of time trying to catch is a subalpine cicada. I never caught one before until I went on a trip with David Marshall, a cicada expert, to Mount Monotautri. At Mount Monotautri, there's a viewing platform that takes you way up high. There were loads up there. An even luckier catch was how I caught a greater bronze cicada. I'd been trying to catch one all day long at Prongia. Finally, I saw one and swooped my neck down. I didn't catch and it flew away, right into a spider's web, which made it a bit easier to retrieve. <laughs> Some scares are so hard to find, I still haven't caught them yet. In the North Island, I haven't caught the Dugdale or Ilanthe cicadas. I've heard the Dugdale cicadas several times in several different places, but I haven't managed to catch one yet. As for Ilanthe, I think I've heard it once, up on the top of the Kaimais. Sometimes I wonder if it's gone extinct, and that's why I can't find it. This photo is of a dead Ilanthe cicada from the Lanky Research Collection. I really want my book to eventually only have live cicada photos in it. You usually hear cicadas before you see them, so you've got to know what you're listening for. For example, a chorus cicada sounds like this. And a clapping cicada sounds like this. <laughs> Another cool thing about cicadas is that only young people can hear some species. This is an April green cicada playing right now. If you can't hear it, then I'm afraid this means you're officially old. <laughs> Challenge three, I have to go to school. Cicada season starts in about November and goes through to about April. But the peak cicada season for black cicadas in the South Island is February, right when I need to go to school. I once did a trip to the South Island in January hoping to find lots of black cicadas, but I found hardly any because it was too early in the season for them. Challenge four, I can't read Latin. <laughs> Before I wrote my book, there was very little information that I could easily find. 
My insect books only had a few of the different cicada species, and I was finding cicadas that weren't described in these books. There is more information available online with photos and sounds, but when I was young, I couldn't use a computer to find this information. Challenge five, it's really hard to figure out which cicada is which. This is really hard, even for an entomologist like me. <laughs> this is because cicadas look a lot alike. <laughs> Here's a photo of a variable cicada and a subalpine cicada. The way I tell these apart is by the bright yellow stripe on the subalpine cicada. This is why I wrote my book, so people would have a nice, easy way to figure out which cicada species is which. I'd really like to find all of the different cicada species in New Zealand one day, and I'd love to have a chance to find cicadas in other parts of the world too. There are over 3,000 species in the world to find. I hope you've learned something about cicadas and how cool they are. And next time you hear one, you may even be tempted to go out into your garden and fight, go on a cicada hunt too. I'd like to leave you with a cicada sound that everyone can hear. New Zealand's loudest and the most common cicada, the chorus cicada.